Promiscuo podcast. My name's Marina, I'm a knitwear designer and yarn dyer based in the southwest of England. And I've got various things to show you today. They're all scattered about me and it's likely to be mildly chaotic, but we'll see how we go. The first thing I'm going to talk about and show you is my waistcoat, which I have 99.5% finished. Um, this is a scrumper waistcoat and the 0.5% is that it's missing buttons. I need to remember that cardigans and things need buttons and I should probably have the buttons for when I finish the thing because I, when I get towards the end of the project I like to work on it fairly obsessively because that finish line thing is really motivating and then I want to be able to wear it and then if I don't have buttons that's really annoying. Like, I like to wear things buttoned up. Um, I think this does look really cute unbuttoned. Um, but, yeah. So I've ordered um, some buttons for it from someone called Tom Dyson, who is down in the New Forest and makes buttons out of local wood. And the ones I've ordered are U buttons, which he has apparently made from a single tree that was felled quite close to him. And that's just really exciting. I love that kind of thing. And so yeah, pending buttons, but I think it's really sweet in the meantime. Um, so this is the Scrumper waistcoat, which is my design. And this is the second version of it I've made. The first one, the original one, uh, was in John Arbon Textiles Appledore DK yarn. And this yarn is one from uh, my friend Kat, who had some yarn spun up from wool really really close to where she lives. It's Valet Black Nose and Jacobs I believe. Um, and so it's it's a fairly sturdy yarn, like there is nothing soft about it and it's definitely rustic. Um, but I dyed it with woad seeds from my old garden and I love it. I love the colour of it. Uh, I think the yarn has actually worked out really really nicely. It's got a nice bit of fuzz to it. Um, and I really like the length. So I made this version shorter than my previous one. And so it just kind of sits at the high hip there. So my original sample I did with six buttonholes and with this one, I just omitted two of them. So it's two buttonholes shorter. Um, and at least one of my test knitters did a really nice uh, cropped version. Like one of them did even more cropped than this. And it's just so cute, it sits right on like, natural waist um, and it's really sweet. So yes, the pattern is Scrumper Waistcoat. I will chuck a link to that down below because um, it's really fun and it's turned out to be like one of my most popular patterns um, which is really nice. It's not one that I necessarily expected to be so popular because like it does have some proper grandpa vibes about it. Like it's it's got like these little cables and it's got a nice panel of moss stitch down the side. Um, but yeah, it's just really nice that it's, people seem to be into the layering pieces and stuff. Um, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to working out more outfits to fit this into and I really need more cardigans to layer up on top of it. Um, very excited about that, especially as it gets chillier and I just want more and more layers on me so I can hibernate like a bear. Um, I don't really know what order to show you the rest of the things in. Uh, so I think on the subject of patterns that are already out, I will very quickly say these ones I talked about in a lot more detail in the last episode. This is the Et Hedera hat and cowl and the pattern is now out and there are kits available on my website in my hand dyed yarn. So if you are keen, um, those are out now. Really nice, like sweet make, um, inspired by leaves, because we love leaves. And yes, those are on my website and on Ravelry, as is the case with pretty much all of my patterns. Um, then I do have a sort of semi-interim finished thing. Um, 
and I don't think I showed these and I don't remember when I finished them but this is my foggy grey hand spun that I was working on for ages and ages and ages um, and I've labelled them up so I should know which one is the most recent one I think this one might be the most recent one but I don't remember um, and yes, yeah, so this skein, it is this skein, um, it's turned out slightly heavier than the other two and I already know what I'm going to make with these which is quite rare for my hand spun. I usually make a lot of it and then spend ages considering what I'm going to do. But this is going to be a Mistland cardigan which I'm hoping to cast on this winter, like not immediately but possibly as part of my Out of the Dark make along. So in the last episode I asked if people would be interested in a knit along for Lapidarium which is a yoke jumper design of mine and quite a few people were really keen at the idea and that's lovely and very encouraging but I also kind of had not taken into account that if I ran a knit along for that it would sort of run straight into the Out of the Dark make along which is a thing I do every year from 1st of January through to the solstice so 20th 21st of March I should look that up but I haven't sorted out the details yet um, but I will be running that and that is a make along for using any of my stuff, like any of my hand dyed yarn, any of my fibre bats or hand dyed tops, um, any of my patterns, all projects using stuff you've got from me are eligible and there are some nice prizes. I don't have the prizes like all sorted out yet but it's something that I am working on in the background. Um, and so because I'm doing that anyway, I'm going to roll the lapidarium thing into that because um, I'm also planning on making my own lapidarium. I don't know whether making two garments during the course of the make along as well as working on design stuff that I have in the background is actually going to be feasible, but we will see. Um, yes, so if you like the sound of that, then you can start queuing up your project now because it's never too soon and it's getting to be a busy time of year. Um, so yes, all that to say, hopefully I will start knitting with this um, sometime this winter and you can see the progress on this um, from various previous episodes if you've not seen it already because I've talked about it quite a lot because it went on forever and ever and ever. <laughs> um, and then since the last episode I have started and completed another spinning project and it has now become a weaving project and I will go over there and show you that in a minute because it's it's not over here and blooms are not super transportable and difficult to hold up. Um, so next up we have some, if I say so myself, very nice yarn. Um, I've dyed a little like mini collection of limited edition colours um, and I'm just so happy with these ones I really really love them. Uh, it's five colours they're on my Mend It bases so DK and 4ply. Uh, the 4ply is 180 meters and the DK is 120 meters per 50 grams. Uh, someone asked if my, in my last episode why I do well whether I have 100 grams rather than 50 gram ones and I don't I do 50 gram skeins just because they it's a really good yarn for color work and for combining colors and also for smaller projects like mittens and hats and things uh, as well as like garments that just use lots of colors for example um, and all of those things are much easier to plan and budget for uh, if you don't have to get 100 grams of every colour. Like if you're making a pair of mittens that uses three colours you're going to end up probably with about 75% of your yarn left over if you use 100 gram skeins. So it's just a way of making things a little bit more accessible um, for multicolour and small projects. Um, 
And yeah, I also just really like 50 grams gains. I think they're nice. Um, and also it's a yarn that splices really well, so you don't have to worry about ends and things. I always just spit splice when I'm changing yarns. Um, and because I only use natural fibres, um, it's a bit different if you're using plant fibres, but with like wool and mohair and things, you can do a spit splice and it's great and it means you don't have to weave in ends between yarns. Um, so yeah. So these colours um, are, I don't know, I wanted to create some like really nice, calming, relaxing colours. Uh, so this one is Winterberry, which is like a nice sort of pinky red. It's quite a soft red. Um, and I can be funny about pink, um, but this is close enough to red that I really enjoy it. And then this is called Dawn. It's that sort of... Um, golden light with occasional like pinky purpley clouds at the first light of day before the sun comes up. Um, and again, going enough into the yellow that it's not too pink. Um, this one, let's take these out so you can see a bit better. Uh, this one is called Frostfall and it's just this really nice like icy glacier blue um, sort of sea foamy duck egg thing. Um, and there are occasional bits of like almost lavendery colours in it. But I wanted to go like as pale as I could with a greeny blue. Because um, I tend to really like dark saturated colours, but I also like combining them with really pale delicate colours. Um, and then this one is kind of, it's got a lot of the same uh, sort of hues going on uh, as this one but is much more saturated. This is Aurora, um, sort of mostly kind of cornflowery blue with bits of green and like some darker areas um, and the green is fairly sort of muted and gentle um, and yeah these so the batches on the DK and the four ply are slightly different because they're separate batches um, and they're also limited editions. I don't have recipes for these or anything uh, which is exactly the kind of dyeing I find really fun. Um, just not having to worry about writing anything down and just putting the colours in the pots in a way that seems nice to me. Really enjoy that. And then this last colour is called Swamp. Um, sort of as a not quite a dare from my patrons, but they definitely encouraged me. <laughs> I was like, can I get away with calling it just something really unappealing? And it's been the most popular colour so far, so apparently yes. Um, it's just this really nice sort of olivey kind of army green, um, but with areas of more yellow and then these kind of burgundy patches. Um, it's just very muted and I really, really enjoy it. And my favourite combination by far is these three. I think they're glorious together. I think they're so nice. Um, I, I think these two work really nicely. Like you could do a colour work yoke with those or any colour work project, they would be really nice. Um, but I'm particularly keen on yokes. And then that I just think is so sweet. Those ones for like really nice, warm, comforting vibes. Um, you can put the blues together. And that one, because the, this one is so much more saturated, this one would come up almost looking like a neutral, but with still like a slightly chilly, frosty vibe. I think that would be very sweet. Um, and then this one, you can put with this one. And then that makes this the sort of icier blue of this one pop quite a lot more. Um, the red in there kind of picks up these burgundy-ish tones. And then you can go, if you want pure pastel vibes, that's so pretty. I really like that. Um, so yeah, those colours uh, are limited editions. They also sit really nicely along with a lot of my regular colours. Um, if you would like, 
if you're having a look at them and maybe wanted to consider getting some colours, um, I'm always well up for showing colour combinations. Like if you're thinking about a colour combination, aren't sure if it's going to work together, or if you'd like a colour and want another colour to go with it, or want help with putting together a palette, I'm always happy to offer like email support or messages on Instagram or whatever. Um, if you don't get a reply on Instagram, just chase me because messages sometimes get lost, but it is easier to send photos back and forth and I can take photos off skeins of yarn and we can pretend we're actually in a yarn shop or something and you can see what the skeins look like next to each other because I realise on a website it can be super difficult and I want to make it as easy as possible and I love combining colours and I love helping other people to do so. So, yay! Um, so those are my new yarn colours and yeah some colours are running a little bit low, Swamp has been popular um, but at the moment there's there are skeins available of all of those. Um, now okay I'm going to show you this one quickly because if you've watched previously you've seen it a few times before but because it's a bit of a beast of a project it changes in between episodes and I'm very almost finished with the body on this. Um, oh, are we going to fit it in? Here we go. Um, it's difficult to see the whole thing. A, because, you know, it's quite big now. Um, and B, because we've got a neck steek set up, which means that it's slightly difficult to show you the top of the front motif. Um, but this is a design for Making Stories issue 12 which will be coming out autumn next year, so 2024. And on the back we've just got the same repeating pattern. We've got our armhole steaks here. Um, and I'm expecting to finish the body for this in the next couple of days, because it's very almost there. Uh, the yarn is from Telling Yarns. Uh, the colours are Mrs Coulter and Meg. Um, very nice greeny blue hues which I just love and I'm really really enjoying working with the yarn and I hope I will get the opportunity to work with it again in the future because it's just delightful. Um, it's got like a bit of a, without being super rustic, it's got a slightly crunchy feel to it. Um, and then I've been steam blocking that sort of as I go which is something I tend to do. Like, if anyone ever asks me about a project um, and, you know, does it look like my floats are too tight, my yoke is puckering a bit, does it look like it's going to block out? Give it a steam block, get the iron out, put it on high steam and steam it. Be careful if it's like acrylic or anything because acrylic does not respond well to heat. Um, natural fibres are all going to do fine and steam blocking I find it quite motivating because it makes things look a lot nicer while you're working on them um, and also it can help you establish any problems that might not block out and so you can decide earlier on whether to address them. Um, yeah, so that's those things and then I have a design that was published in Knit Now magazine earlier this year, The Rights Have Reverted Back to Me and so I'm going to be self-publishing it soon and it's a fun one and I think it's actually really perfect for this time of year. Um, so this is called the Deep Field Top and as you can see it has a whole lot of stars on it. Um, I, can, I can put it on, I'm going to put it on top of this because it's actually two sizes too big for me and so I, I'm basically in a bit of a conundrum as to how to model it because I model pretty much all of my own stuff, but Knit Now said with this one that they were keen to get samples in larger sizes to, you know, show that they're actually making some commitments to uh, size inclusivity, which they have done for ages and is really great, but they tend to feature smaller models and I model all of my own stuff and I am fairly small. Um, but it's just really sweet and to be honest I would not have chosen this colour of blue, I would have gone for a darker, slightly more purpley blue 
um, this kind of slightly almost turquoisey royal blue is a bit much and it kind of makes me feel like a kids tv show character sort of slightly more grown-up Mr Tumble vibes <laughs> um but it's got three colours um of stars so they make a little gradient so you've got the dark yellow and then the lighter yellow and then the white um and so the yarn for this is Jameson and Smith um and so it's fairly lightweight it's um spindrift and I don't have the colour numbers for you um, but I can put those in the notes and yeah so I'm going to be releasing this pattern soon so if you want to know when it comes out or when any of my other stuff comes out do sign up to my newsletter because uh, that's the best place to hear about new releases um, because Instagram is incredibly unreliable for people actually seeing things and I don't I only record approximately once a month on YouTube, so there's often a lot of stuff to catch up on. Um, so yes, I'm going to be releasing this soon. I might um, put together some colour suggestions of my Mend It 4 ply, because I think it would be really sweet um, in various colour combinations. I think like a lighter more sort of frosty vibe could be really nice. So in if you, instead of stars, imagined that they were like snowflakes or like hoarfrost, uh, I think that could be really pretty. Um, something like that could be very sweet, all that. Um, and then some like gray colors and things. Yeah. So this pattern will come out soon. I might just have to photograph it on myself and say this isn't fitting how it's intending intended to you know I've got a few layers here and we've got a fair bit of extra space it's intended to fit more closely and you know come in narrower on the shoulders um we'll see how we wangle things um yeah so this one's fun I'm gonna take it off because I'm cooking now I've got two sleeveless things on. Um, oh, and it is steaked. Um, steaky steaks at the neck and armholes. And it is a fairly classic. Um, you can see, where is it? You can see the single row here where I just forgot to catch my floats. I don't know why I did that. Um, but with wear, floats are just not a problem because it all becomes like one contiguous fabric. Um, so yes, I think this is, it's a really fun design. I will say originally I didn't intend it to be quite so starry, like originally it was going to have like one little band of stars around the bottom. They were like, could we have just loads more stars please? So, cool, yeah, sounds good. Um, so yeah, like I, I like it and I'm really satisfied with how the pattern meets up on the shoulder. Um, like I do, I do enjoy considering the details in patterns. Um, and yeah, just making sure that I do things nicely when I can. Um, Yes. So now that is all the things I had in a big pile on the sofa to show you and I will go over and show you my weaving slash spinning project and when I started talking to you not that long ago uh, it was lovely and sunshiny and now there's a storm outside so the light has pretty much gone. Um, we'll see how we go. So this project is one I've started fairly recently. Uh, this is my first time weaving in over a year and a half, um, which is really exciting because I've missed weaving and I've been wanting to get the loom out for 
ages. Um, but it just hasn't really been the time. And so this is hand spun yarn. I spun the warp first. Um, and I did show off the fiber that became this yarn in the previous episode. Um, and if you want to look at the yarn um, before it was all put on the loom, uh, there's a look on my Instagram fairly recently. Um, and the fibre is one I dyed up for the warp and then the weft is the same fibre but naturally coloured. So it's uh, the skewer blend from Wing and Woolwork. And exciting side note, I've just found out that Wing and Woolwork are going to be relocating to Gloucester, which is much, much closer to me because they are currently in Yorkshire and it's a bit far away and I do like to do things as locally as possible and so it's just really exciting that they're going to be nearby um, because I've loved working with them on this project um, they've just been delightful and I really like what they're doing with British wool um, yeah and so this is a blend of fibre that I designed and they processed um, it's five different British breeds, uh, British sheep breeds. Uh, there's Teeswater and Cheviot and Dorset Horn and Manx Lochton and Jacobs. Uh, are we going up or down? I'm very out of practice with the weaving, you will have to forgive me. Um, and I did record the process of warping up the loom, um, which will be going out for my patrons. The video isn't ready yet because things are mildly chaotic and it's going to be a bit of work to edit. Um, and I'm alternating two separate shuttles, even though they're the same yarn, um, just because my spinning changes slightly because I'm technically not actually that good a spinner. Um, and so I sp spun one skein and then the other and they're just slightly different. They have slightly different amounts of twist and slightly different weights. Um, this one I think has the less twist and is a bit heavier. Uh, and so I'm alternating. So instead of using one and then the other, where you would get a noticeable change in the fabric, where you know, after this point, um, it just looks a bit different because the yarn's different. I'm just alternating so it'll be fairly consistent throughout the fabric and you're much less likely to notice, um, you know, the changes between picks here. And I did the same with the warp where one of the skeins of warp was much heavier than the other and so I just kind of alternated as I was putting it on the loom. And as I'm talking I keep forgetting what I'm doing. It has, as I said, been a very long time since I've done any weaving and I've remembered that I'm not actually very good at it. <laughs> I've done, you know, th so I haven't mentioned this is going to be a skirt um, which is something I decided sort of as I was spinning up the russety red yarn. Um, I decided it would be lovely to weave some fairly thick warm fabric um, for a thick warm skirt that's basically going to be like wearing a blanket. Um, and I have woven fabric for three different garments now. And I think my improvement as a weaver in each of them is noticeable. Um, but also, you know, I, I still consider myself just beyond a beginner weaver in that I have done a few things now, but I'm still not well practiced. Um, and A rigid heddle loom 
unless you want to get very finicky about it, is slightly limiting because um, more complex sort of table and floor looms. It's not necessarily that you can do much more interesting, complicated things, but if they just make it so much more easy and quick to do those things. Um, so you can do really complex, lovely things on a rigid heddle loom, but a lot of them will take you ages. And I have limited patience for that. So I tend to enjoy plain weave and just having fun with my yarns. Um, so yeah, you can see I've just woven this much so far. Um, and that's been um, a very short bit of weaving a couple of evenings ago. And then what I'm doing just now. And so I'm very excited about this. Um, it'll probably be going for a while. I can just kind of keep it set up here and do bits and pieces of it. I'm not going to put any sort of pressure on myself to finish. Well, oh. <laughs> the second I say that, I immediately want to contradict myself. Um, I say I'm not going to put any pressure on myself, but in a few weeks, I am going to be attending, not, not just attending, but exhibiting at Stollen und Wolle, which is a German Christmas market, but kind of craft and yarn themed, that Becky and Marcus of Rivenitz are putting on at their studio. And I'm very excited about it. It's a one day show on the 26th of November, which is a Sunday. Um, and I'm really, really looking forward to going up and it's it's the furthest I will have taken my yarn north in a very long time. Um, and I think it's going to be really enjoyable. Um, and so the temptation is, because I can see this being part of a really nice kind of festive outfit, it's vaguely tempting to say I'd like to have the fabric woven and the skirt made for that, but that would probably be putting a lot of unnecessary pressure on myself given that I have various other deadlines going on. And we are also in the season of child bringing home illnesses from nursery. And I do have to keep in mind that I might end up with less work time than I ought to have, which means lots of catching up in evenings and on weekends and things, which is always a bit grim. But hey ho. Um, so yeah, we'll see how we go. I'm not really going to put pressure on myself to do that, but if it looks like it's going to be feasible and I'm making nice progress with this, then I might consider it because the actual sewing will be minimal fuss. I think I'll do, as I have done previously, a nice pleated skirt, zero waist type thing. Um, use the offcuts from the waistband to make uh, belt loops. But we'll see how we go. Oops, see I shouldn't have done that. Right, that is a sign that I should stop for now and stop wittering because even small amount of concentration whilst talking is apparently incredibly difficult for me these days. <laughs> so I'll leave it there um, and I shall show you how this progresses and whatever state it's in next time I come around to chat with you. So thank you very much for joining me for this episode today. It's been lovely having a chat and catching you up with what I've been working on. And if you want to catch up with what I'm doing in between podcast episodes, you can find me on Instagram and you can sign up to my newsletter. 
and I've also got a fairly active uh, Discord server for my patrons, and patrons also get like early access to uh, like new products, and they also get an exclusive video a month. So if those sound like things that you are interested in, do go and check that out over there. And so I will catch you next time, and it's been lovely chatting. Bye bye.